Hi, I'm Kate Ward, and this is your Dickman Farms Smart Gardening Tip. And today we're talking about what's bugging you in the garden. And here's a perfect example. Oh, what is that? Those are yucky. Those are aphids. Yep. This particular is a very, very large black-eyed Susan. Actually, it's in that family, the Rudbeckia family. But every year it gets these lovelies. Yeah, and it just gets covered. Um, so what we're talking about today is things that bug you out in the garden and maybe what you should or maybe shouldn't or don't need to do. So that said, let's back her up. I can't back up. There we go. And you can see on this particular plant, here's there are aphids in it, but these are all clean stems. And then I have a little section down here of some aphids and a section maybe here. And this branch has got a lot. Now, should I spray? Should I not spray? Well, that's a personal preference, really, at this point. You can see this plant is doing just fine. I'm not seeing any side effects of this population, but it's getting pretty heavy. I mean, this stem goes all the way down. So in this case, I could choose to maybe spray this or take them out some other way. Um, one very easy way to do this is to just, uh, it kind of a little gross, and, um, yay, yucky. Just gonna take out a relatively large portion of this particular population. Yeah, just reduce that population by quite a bit. You can see it, it fell all over. There's now mass carnage, Ugh, yucky. Um, and you know, these will kind of, whoever didn't make it and kind of got smooshy deer is, <laughs> Mmm, yummy. Um, it's going to fall down on this leaf. It'll rain. It'll fall back into the environment. And um, and there we go. And I haven't needed to spray anything. You could wear a glove if this was just absolutely revolting to you. But, but you could do that. Or you could choose to leave it alone. You could choose a product that is labeled for aphids specifically. That's one of the big things we get a lot of. You know, I have this bug. What's a spray for it? Um, you know, here's the biggest thing is, is we don't want to just give you a spray. We need to know what we're treating, we're helping you to treat for, because otherwise we're not using those products correctly. So it's very important to know after you decide what you want to do, do you need to treat it? And what's the pressure? Can the plant handle it? Can you handle it? What do you mind? This plant way up here, all the way up and all the way over here is a viburnum. Now this is a snowball viburnum and you can see it's got a lot of holes in the leaves. Um, this was from viburnum leaf beetle. Huh, go figure, right? Viburnum plant specifically gets viburnum leaf beetle. So that said, this damage is old and it's done. And we decided that the plant could handle this. In this particular instance, every couple of years now, these get a pretty heaviest infestation. Um, but it's not every year. And so it's nothing that is really causing the plant any serious problem. So we decided to just leave this alone. We did not treat for it. Um, the plant is doing just fine. It's put on a lot of growth. So that was our choice. So sort of choose. Is the plant handling it? Does it need to be treated? Is it otherwise healthy? Because some of these beetles and beetle larvae got picked off by the local birds out in that population. Um, so think about that. So once you've had your decision and you've decided, oh, maybe I'm going to treat or not, let's look at a couple of critters and things out in the garden that you might see right now. And I have a pretty big garden, so, and we don't do, um, we just don't happen to do a lot of spraying. We choose not to. So that said, we see a lot of things. Um, but for the most part, the garden is in balance and Every once in a while, like our favorite Japanese beetles, um, can be pretty pesky. But for the most part, nature takes care of itself. Um, we have a pretty good balance here. So there's some things you might see out there. This is actually, um, you can see these raised uh, little bumps on this leaf. This is not something that you would normally treat for. So if you see these on your leaves, don't worry too much about it. It's caused by a, um, a little gall midge, uh, aerified mite in some instances, depending on who it is on what kind of tree. And the plant forms these nodules in response to the, um, the gall midge. So that's why that's there. So nothing too much to worry about. Wah, we can go. This here is bug damage. This here is bug damage. But this here is powdery mildew. So no amount of insecticide is going to work for this. There are some chemicals that'll treat not only insects, but disease as well. Here's another example of powdery mildew on another plant. Well, then we have this. So this plant is normally, this is its natural color. However, on the back of it, 
is something else to show you. We saw red aphids. These are much smaller. There's little tiny black aphids. Again, compared to the size of that leaf, there's not a lot there. I'm not worried about it out in the environment. Um, they're not doing too much damage. You can see that leaf is nice and healthy. I'm going to leave it alone. But who else do we find possibly out in the garden this time of year? I keep losing my jar. Let's have a look. All right. Here's a culprit. This is the red leaf lily beetle. Thanks, guy. I'm going to do you in because I don't want you in my garden. Um, but that was the guy that actually did the damage on this leaf here. If they're high enough populations, they can completely strip the uh, lilies. These are the Asiatic and Oriental lilies. Completely strip them, and that's it. We're done. You know, they, uh, they don't come back from that. Um, who else do I have here? Let's see. So on the back of this particular leaf, I found this on one of my roses. So this happens to be on a columbine leaf, but this is what's called rose maggot. And a lot of people say, I, my rose, my leaves are just disappearing, um, but I don't see anything. It's because this little caterpillar type critter is exactly the same color as your leaves. So it's really hard to see. A good one possibly to think about spraying because they can do a lot of damage pretty quickly to those rose leaves. But on the other side, the reason I picked this columbine is here is an example of leaf miner. Again, here is something that if the population got high enough, it could actually do some pretty good damage to the first set of leaves and columbines. You might think of treating it, but because it's a leaf miner, which means it lives between the surfaces of the leaf and it forms these little chambers, there's specific controls for these guys. So you want to be really sure you're, you know what you're getting so you can take care of it if you want to. Who else do we have here? Let's see. <laughs> well, here we have a Japanese, whoops, where's my camera? Japanese beetle. Everybody knows him. Yay, thanks, beetly boo. But on the opposite side, unless I lost him, oh, he might have run away already. Oh, I think he did. Oh, well, never mind. I won't show you him. This is a tortoise. Be oh, okay, that was a tortoise beetle. Uh, sometimes you might get those on your ornamentals, things like sweet potato vines, or in the garden, actually, sweet potatoes. Um, there is another red leaf lily beetle. Might fly away and I'll have to do him in later. But there he is, kind of looking around. Oh, there's a little red aphid there. Hi guys, let's be friends. Let's not. Okay, go away. So those are some, come, stop it. Just go away. Um, and then, again, this is knowing your plants. Oh, sorry about that, everybody. Let's see, where did he go? This is a hard one, bear with me. This is, oh, hard to see, this little guy here. Sorry, I've been digging in the dirt. Oh, there you go. Oh, there he went. That was an asparagus beetle. So because this is taping, you can roll back and look at it if you want to. And then on the inside here is an asparagus beetle larva. Again, get it just right. And they will pretty much, they'll do a good job of eating your asparagus plants. But they're only around this time of day, or year rather. So I know this has been a long one, but these are some things you see in the garden this time of year. Um, just know what your know what your plant is, or if you don't know, bring it on in, ask us, because sometimes things might mimic a, uh, a disease, and they're not. Um, it might be a reflected light um, against a house that might cause something like this. Some things might be like, oh, it's slugs. It might be old damage. It might be disease and not a bug at all. So it's really important to know who you have, like plant-wise, and then what bug you're treating for. So I know there's been some examples of what you might see in the garden. Um, come on and see us. We'll get you the right treatment or point you in the direction for a way to help you to see if you really do can just do a little well, massacre control or do you need a little something more or can you just let it be so this has been your long-winded but hopefully helpful dickman farms smart gardening tip